You know what the upcoming election is really about? It's about power. These days, most Americans have little or none, not as employees or consumers or even voters. The companies we work for, the corporations and banks we deal with, and the political system we participate in have all been taken over by a relatively small group of very wealthy and privileged people. It's time to take the power back. Now, it didn't used to be this way, and it doesn't have to be this way. It's up to us to build a movement, what Bernie Sanders calls the political revolution, if you will, to make that happen. Consider first the decline of worker power. 50 years ago, a third of private sector workers belonged to unions, which gave them the bargaining power to get a substantial share of the economy's gains. Now, fewer than 7% are unionized, and most of the economy's gains are going to the top. CEOs, who earned 20 times the pay of average workers in the 1960s, are now getting 300 times their pay. Inequality is out of control. We need stronger unions, and workers need a louder voice. Second, along with declining worker power has come growing corporate and financial power. Just over a century ago, Teddy Roosevelt, a Republican, mind you, busted up the Standard Oil Trust and other giant monopolies. 85 years ago, Franklin D. Roosevelt enacted the Glass-Steagall Act that separated investment from commercial banking. Now, due to a combination of deregulation and greed that allowed the financial industry to run amok, a handful of giant banks have a chokehold on the entire economy, and we're heading for another too-big-to-fail financial crisis. We must institute stronger protections for the economy and for all of us, such as resurrecting Glass-Steagall and busting up the biggest banks. Third and finally, big money has taken over our democracy. The moneyed interests have driven down corporate tax rates and expanded income tax loopholes. During the administration of Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower, the super-rich paid a marginal tax rate of over 90%. Now, the highest tax rate is less than half that. And because of countless tax loopholes, most of the wealthy pay far less than 30%, a lower rate than many middle-class families pay. We need higher taxes on the wealthy to do what the nation needs done, like free public higher education. And we must get big money out of politics. The question to be decided as we barrel toward the November presidential election is whether we will continue building the movement necessary to take back the power that is rightfully ours. <laughs>